So let's talk about Nordic chin lines, specifically how they're ahistorical and invalid. You may have seen this song I am my mother's savage daughter paired with this look. What you may not know is that one, it comes from a harmful stereotype, which we'll talk about, but two, it offends indigenous women because that chin line has a specific history. Once upon a time, you could look at a woman's face. You could know who her family was, where she was from, what her achievements were, and her place in the community. The whole thing was told on her face. Facial tattoos in general to indigenous women specifically, a lot of those tattoos were illegal for a very long time. But nearly a century ago, the Catholic Church forbade them to speak of traditional practices. And it forbade Inuit women from getting tattooed. It comes with residential school, but mainly the church. The church said that they were evil, so there was a lot of shame around them. Uh, which resorted to women talking about them behind closed doors. The church and the government, which was of course full of uh, white Christians, made it illegal to have those things, cultural signifiers like those tattoos. So now these indigenous women are using those tattoos, not just in the cultural signifiers that they used to be used for, but also now to heal from that generational trauma caused by white Christian hegemonic colonizers. And something that paganism has in common with leftism, that decolonization and the deconstruction of these hegemonic power structures that are so ingrained in our society, whether you are raised in a Christian home or not, you will be influenced by that white Christian hegemony. And oftentimes when those of us with a melanin deficiency do something offensive, say something offensive, rather than correct ourselves, rather than internalize that and go, oh, I'm sorry, let me, let me fix that, let me research that, we often double down on our ignorance. The only way to decolonize and deprogram your mind from that Christian hegemonic overculture, that colonizer mentality, is to listen to people who are not like you. Listen to indigenous people, listen to people of color, listen to people outside of your demographic, understand they aren't a monolith, and that obviously opinions differ, but be culturally sensitive. You can't just recon, you have to decon. It's not just reconstruction of the pagan past, it is also deconstruction of that colonizer mentality that we have been raised with. And again, that's something that permeates the culture. That is not something that is specific to like just Christians or just people that were raised in Christian homes. That's something that we all deal with. Every single one of us that grows up in a culture will be affected by that culture. And if you're in the United States like I am, you have been raised in a society that venerates that white Christian hegemonic overculture. So the stereotypical look that you're seeing with the feathers and the bones and the shitty faux leather, this comes from this barbarian stereotype. And you'll notice that it kind of has an indigenous look to it. That is because those of us that are raised within that white Christian hegemony associate that look with being uncivilized, with being quote unquote savage. So it's not even just about drawing little lines on your face or doing shitty makeup when you don't understand the culture. This gal here, Margaret Wolf, has all these bind runes and stuff on her face. She's also done Egyptian styles. She obviously does not care about these cultures. She's literally doing this for clout. It's like a stupid donation thing on her page. She's just trying to gain more money through painting her face not even teaching people how to paint their face, painting her face and low effort lip syncing content that some people find aesthetically pleasing. And when people tell you, especially indigenous people tell you, what you're doing is culturally insensitive, doubling down on ignorance is not the way to go. The way to go is to reflect, internalize, understand what you're doing is wrong and fix yourself. So decolonize your mind in order to break free from that white Christian hegemonic overculture. Listen to indigenous people. Listen to people that are not like yourself. Do not double down on ignorance and invalidate what they're saying to you. Try to understand what they're saying to you at the very least. And I'll leave you with this. 
The song that they're using, it's kind of a feminist song, it's kind of an uplifting song, and by making these low effort videos, they are also not doing the song justice. And I'll leave you with something the original artist said regarding her song. And you tell me if what these people are doing, if this makeup style that appropriates indigenous cultures and engages in harmful stereotypes aligns with the spirit of this song. It is an anthem of empowerment, not a song meant to serve a specific blood or people or skin. If you find strength and power and your own voice in it, this is your song. And I hope you sing it with the strength and rage and beauty and power that is within you, whoever you are. Women are not ever less than. We are the singers of storms, the fire made flesh, the inexorable power of the mountains, the kind warmth and the cutting lash of the wind. We are half of the world and we have been taught to speak softly and behave mildly because we are easier to control that way. I am honored that daughters of the first peoples find a voice here, and daughters of the sea wolves, and the daughters of great grandmothers, grandmothers, and mothers, wherever they lived and, and sang and died. All of you are their living legacies and they hear you singing, be assured they are proud of you. Whoever you are, you have a voice that cannot be silenced. Together, our voices cannot be unheard.